first off, congratulations. Um, I believe, yeah, this was the first uh, film that I watched and I started my Sundance off on a high note. Um, but uh, one thing that came up was that this came together pretty quickly. And so like, <laughs> uh, did it feel helpful to have a fire under you? Or are you like, okay, never again? <laughs> like, I think to be fair, we kind of always have a fire under our asses with this stuff <laughs> and it helps it does help because you know we made our previous film together saint francis and it was like okay start writing in january we're going to shoot this in july mm -hmm. and that was awesome because i think there are filmmakers who spend five years developing projects and then there are folks who kind of capture a moment and i think that's what we're trying to do like it helps you be a little less precious, I think. Mm -hmm. And we were sort of raring to go. We had been trying to make a different film for a while. And so when this came up, we were just so excited to get to be on set and work with actors and do the thing that we had been wanting to do for years. Yeah. Another thing that gets mentioned is you all are a family and I'm sure you get a lot of questions of like, how'd you guys kind of make the group decision to be in this? But how'd you meet? I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to know for a long time. But I mean, I think like, uh, aspect we were like really curious about too is that this is a family that has gone through kind of a huge private tragedy and so like what was the conversation around that aspect of it of you guys coming together uh as a family in this film to like grieve uh a character within the film like that's the heaviness of yeah. that <laughs> yeah yeah um I, I, I don't think we really talked too much about it specifically. I think we all individually uh, uh, came to our own uh, feelings about them, uh, about the tragedy, and just interacted that way um, because we are a real family. There's a lot of stuff in families that just remains unspoken. It doesn't need to be uh, spoken, but... Uh, is there anyway so i feel like that was the dynamic anyway i i can't talk keith and i talked a little bit about it uh right at the st beginning of the shooting uh we talked a little bit about how we had to hang on to we had to make sure even in the moments of levity that we were remembering what had happened to us right so that that was something that we always had to ground ourselves in and you said something really eloquently the other day about because we are parents, it's very easy to imagine that horrific experience. It's it's not hard. It's very easy to it, you, it's very easy to imagine once you're a parent, mm -hmm. right? You think about it all the time. You think yes. about it all the you time, yeah. and um, it's constantly in your mind. So so it's not a difficult thing to. Reach. And, and you, 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 ha you're an only child. Yeah. So since I was an only child, it wasn't something that I like, you know, had a had a person, you know, that I could directly think of. But um, we chose one of my like my mom and I talked, and I chose one of my cousins that I'm pretty close to because uh, my male cousins they're a lot older than me, and to a couple of them they are like my older brothers. Um, so I just for the moments that I had to picture having my brother, you know, and, and, and losing him, I thought about one of my cousins. Something that has come up that's very effective about this is sort of how it's a love letter to theater and how it's also showing uh, how people, artists can uh, process something in their life through their art. Um, and so was that something you all were trying to capture? And was there a meta-ness suit of like, I'm acting out exactly why I'm an actor? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think uh, I, I, the, the, the character I play is not an actor, never was, never thought about it. Um, but I, I do think that, um, that art has a healing quality about it and um, and uh, it could be a piece of music uh, a painting a piece of theater uh, that uh, accepts everything in the human condition and 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 in that acceptance frees everything up so it 
it frees my character up in a way that he never thought was possible. Um, and just Kelly, I think something about that too was part of this was working during the pandemic, right? Yeah. 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 Well, it came, I started writing it during the pandemic and I was feeling, you know, super isolated and lonely and wasn't really allowed to act or be around theater people who are my people. And so it came out of that sense of desiring community and knowing how important that is and what an impact that can have. And um, yeah, it sprang from there. And so then it was really amazing a couple of years later to be on set and like have what felt like a real theater troupe. Yeah. yeah, it really did feel like, and all so of us fun. are theater actors, and so it was amazing to be on set and really play theater games and capture that on camera. And um, so much fun. Yeah, yeah. and create a, a true ensemble. It felt like we were at play practice every day. <laughs> Kelly does. Kelly does such a magnificent job in the film. Of um, it's funny and 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 it and it's poking a little bit of fun at the goofy things that we do in a rehearsal process which it, to an outside eye is stupid <laughs> but it, it's done with such love yeah. and tenderness um that it's just so beautiful and fun and really sweet yeah 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 we have so many bloopers of people, you know, <laughs> laughing at each other, cracking up as we're playing these dumb theater games. And it's some of my favorite memories from set. Yeah. Um, well, that was part of the fun of watching it. You guys have such a brilliant ensemble as well. Um, but one person I wanted to bring up was uh, Dolly De Leon is in this. Yes. And yes. you guys uh, got to work with her coming off of like such a major moment. And so what was it like working with Dolly, especially after she just went through such a big thing. I think, Alex, we can start with you, yeah. Sure, yeah, I mean, Dolly, ever since seeing Triangle of Sadness, and I saw it quite late, because we 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 didn't go to the festival when when it, when it premiered, and, um, but Adam, our manager, talked about, it was just like, this person, like, one, essentially one can, yeah. you know? It was like, that was the feeling of Dolly. And so casting, first of all, her even responding to the script was incredible and responding so specifically. But um, having her come to set was really interesting because we we had spent the first week just with the family. So imagine, you know, we're, we're essentially block shooting by location. So we were at the house and all those scenes have very certain quality to it. I mean, there's humor, there's lightness, but it's it was strange. We, we almost like did the arc of the film without Rita without this like catalytic character. Yeah. Um, and um, and so when she came to set, it was really interesting because we didn't know, would Dolly be Dolly or would she be Dolly who is a part of this ensemble? And she just like slipped right into mm -hmm. the, um, the rhythm and the way that we were doing things. I mean, she found out a few weeks before she got there, maybe the week before she got there that we didn't have hair and makeup. Um, she was like, great, I love it. That's, yeah, we were so worried that she would be like a star yeah. and like come in and because she is. She is a star. And then she was like, I love doing my own hair and makeup. And she had done a lot of theater in the Philippines. So she yeah. came from the same sort of like down and scrappy and, and liking to be that involved. And that was a real gift. Yeah. There was a moment um, the first day that we were doing all the shakes, they were doing all the Shakespeare stuff. Um, I was on set because I, when I wasn't working, I had to be Catherine's guardian. And uh, <laughs> our, we had an amazing woman doing costumes yeah. for that stuff and we were trying to squeeze Dolly into this little pink the uh -huh. pink thing and like shoving her in and I'm putting tape on her boobs and, and she goes <laughs> look at me a 50 40 year old virgin oh, I, love that. <laughs> I was like oh she was so generous with yes. all of us yeah. and so generous with yeah. you she was so fun and just to like be around yeah. even when we weren't filming she she was just so fun to talk to and you know, she was never not willing to like hang out with you, and yeah. and and like like Alex said, she just like totally came right in and just became one of the people in the group, part of the ensemble. Yeah, part of the yeah. ensemble. Um, yeah. We're we, yeah, I miss her. We miss her a lot yeah. not being here, but yeah. yeah. There's a lot that can go on on a film set, and so just uh, how do you uh, keep focused? Do you have strategies for sort of maintaining focus, staying on track with uh, whether you got to get the scene done today or whatever kind of task you're doing. At the Nobody time. says their first AD. 
Is that, <laughs> that's like there's literally a job for that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Other, I mean, Wilson, Wilson was, was amazing. Yeah. Our first was, Alex a, Wilson. was amazing. Yeah. He came up on St. Francis with us, and, and um, I came from that world, so I really love that job. And it's very, it's like a creative job. So, um, but yeah, staying focused. We were able to get a lot done because mm -hmm. honestly, these actors are amazing and they didn't require a ton of takes. Yeah. And um, they they work quickly, so we, will, we were able to work quickly. And I would say the exact same thing about our cinematographer, Luke Dyra. And um, yeah, we were able to move really quickly and stay focused because we didn't have a choice. We had to move very, very quickly, but it was possible because of the team. Yeah. yeah. These guys too, uh, bring such joy and levity and uh, never ever lost their cool I don't know. and just not, privately maybe privately <laughs> on the phone at Bank of America maybe but not in, with us no matter I mean because there's always bumps right yeah. there was some really large bumps. large bumps <laughs> Kelly got COVID and was like directing from her car in the parking lot and we Alex would say hold on Kelly has a note and hand us the walkie talkie <laughs> that, was, that was probably the most embarrassing part of the whole shoot because Kelly on the walkie talkie was like such a good director <laughs> that the actors I'd be like okay guys okay and here Kelly's in and then you could just see their faces light up oh. and they're like ready for this for oh, these beautiful oh, this Alex. clarity coming through the walkie and but uh, I mean you ne and and things would happen and Alex and this was you you never lost your cool you were always with a smile and you would say we got it we're going to handle it we're going to manage it and so that trickled down and it was just the most joyful month i've ever spent yeah. every day we couldn't wait to get there mm -hmm. all of us that's awesome and yeah i feel like to that end too like keith i imagine there's probably like a level of focus in like as an actor playing someone who's like getting better and better at acting it's like a I imagine that would be like a tricky kind of thing to portray. Yeah, yeah, it was. He, he I, I kept thinking about that and thinking, okay, so how, um, how do I calibrate? You know, being real bad in the beginning, <laughs> and then suddenly <laughs> being okay. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I like it though because like. You got the the stuff with the rhythm, like which is so funny. <laughs> right. And yeah. then around, yeah. and then it's really more about these like revelations in your life. Correct. So but by the time is. we're on stage, yeah. it's like we're just doing scenes. I don't think we directed you to like project or anything yeah, in those obviously. moments. It was as if we were, you know, the cameras are up on stage. Correct. Um, Correct. You know, you, yeah. you get the sense of what the audience sees, but right. It um, it, it was as if uh, you know. Uh, I'm I'm uh, using this character of Romeo to mm, work through what I'm going through in real life. Yeah. So it wasn't really acting. It was more about this cathartic emotional release. Which is kind of what acting is. Correct. Yeah. But right. my character would have n never have known that. Yeah. Right. I'm not an actor, right? He says that. Correct. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. It's very meta. Very meta. <laughs> yeah, it is.